I'm just saying I don't I don't like the stigma that if he goes to the West, he couldn't mm-hmm. win, and then he goes to the West and he doesn't win. Like everybody's <laughs> rubbing it in my face, like, yeah, well, LeBron's going fishing, Josh. How do you feel about that? Yeah, he's going, yeah, right word. He, <laughs> look, he went fishing what about a month before the playoffs actually began. Exactly. So exactly. okay, <laughs> well, okay, we we're live, brother Phil. All Thank right, you. sir. And thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Um, for taking time out of your busy schedule, Brother Phil. And I thank You're everyone welcome. from the off the record audience for always coming back and uh, uh, spending time with us. Thank you, Sister. Welcome, Salam, Sister Teresa. You always holding it down with us. I appreciate that, Brother Phil. Yes, sir, Brother Joshua. Yes, I thank you for um, your work as an attorney and your work in the nation and the community and everything, Brother You're Phil. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Praise due to Allah. Yes, sir, Brother Phil. Let's start with your. Um, your younger years, when you, what um, college did you attend and how, how was that? What was the circumstances around that? Well, I went to the Lincoln University, the premier uh, HBCU located in Chester County, Pennsylvania. Mm. Um, you know, the first black college and um, went there uh, 1982, uh, January of 1982 and finished our studies, uh, graduated uh, in uh, uh, May of 85 with a degree in political science. And um, it's always been something that I was going to go to college and Allah blessed, uh, blessed me to be able to have the grades and ability to go and do pretty well. Yes, sir. And you pledged Omega Psi Phi? That's right. Omega, the Omega Psi Phi fraternity, beta chapter. In fact, as we uh, affectionately call it, bloody beta chapter. In fact, <laughs> beta, through the uh, Greek alphabet. Mm. Beta is the uh, second letter in the Greek alphabet. And so, of course, Alpha chapter is at Howard University, the founding uh, chapter. And, of course, right after that, we are, are the chapter of, uh, that Lincoln University was founded in uh, February, February 6, 1914. Excellent. And thank you, Brother uh, Kelvin Maxwell. And Brother Phil, what made you choose Omega Sci Fi? Well, you know, uh, when I was on campus, the the, the brothers were you know, the chapter was suspended. Mm. And um, that's nothing new. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people who know back to brass, yeah, you know, yeah. that's really nothing new. I didn't know, you know, of course, at the time. But, um, you know, when there were some, you know, fraternities would have their, you know, functions on campus, and they would always talk about the bras, mm. you know, and okay, well, who, who are these omegas that they're talking about? Mm-hmm. And I remember the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan would say that, you know, if, if something, you know, to the effect of if something really, if, if they're insignificant, then you wouldn't bring them up. Mm-hmm. But of course, they kept bringing us up. And so I always wanted to know then what was the deal. Mm-hmm. And so when I first it had come across and found some of the brothers, of course, when you're suspended, you know, you cannot wear any paraphernalia, have any functions on campus or anything. And so when the brothers finally had gotten off suspension, I, you know, made some inquiries. The brothers had a um, a, uh, a, a smoker and, and it's just like an introductory thing. And, you know, and then I was just interested from there. And then as it turns out, you know, come to find out that, you know, that the our fraternity, and I guess other fraternities as well, but particularly ours, really for the most part, the forefront you know, of the, you know, progressive movements. And even as we know, even when we look at it today, when we uh, uh, inducted, uh, well, when the minister, excuse me, accepted uh, a lifetime membership, and even back uh, uh, about two years ago in Atlanta, when we recognized him with the Lifetime Achievement Award, that just goes to show, in my opinion, how progressive we are, you know, and have been. And, you know, when they gave him the life, when we gave him, I beg your pardon, the Lifetime Achievement Award, you know, you could have gotten that, any fraternity could have given him, you know, the Lifetime Achievement Award. But that just shows, of course, the progress, uh, the progressiveness of Omega, which actually just fit right, you know, hand in hand. Little did I know, of course, how, you know, many at the time, how many illustrious, you know, brothers we had. And I pledged in 1983. And uh, so now we are dealing with what, 36 years. Uh, my line has celebrated 36 years in, uh, in, in the world of Omega. So, Excellent. Thank you for that, sir. And welcome, Salam, Brother Vincent. Uh, my sister Mimi and sister Naima send the greetings to you, Brother Athil. Well, please, please, please return the greetings. Brother Garthia. 
to yes, to sir. everyone, of course, to my my dear Princess Giggles and Princess Naima. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Brother Athil, when did you first hear the, hear hear about the teachings? August of 1982. Mm. What happened was, uh, if I may, uh, Brother Jason, uh, ex out of New York, he and I were in high school together in Brooklyn, and. Um, uh, anybody who you know knows New York or lived in New York in the you know late 70s and early 80s, there was a community that still is around the Ansaru Alak community, and they were a group that would always you know, be on the subways and you know ask for donations, and of course they would give out literature. Well, so I you know began reading up on Islam then, and. Uh, Brother Jason, when we graduated uh, high school and I had gone off to college, Brother Jason, you know, had been the Nation of Islam then, and he told me about the nation, and, you know, I'd already known about Islam, naturally, um, and I had read the autobiography of Malcolm X, that was one of the required readings that we had in our first year of, uh, of college, and so I knew then of the nation, but I did not know you know, that there was the different, I guess, what, um, uh, persuasions of Islam. Mm -hmm. So I come back uh, uh, to New York in, uh, for the summer of 1982, and Brother Jason is telling me about the minister in the nation. I'm telling him, okay, fine, I'll, you know, tell me more and everything, and that's fine. As it wound up that the minister was speaking at the New York State Harlem office, sorry, the New York State office building in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, I not knowing the differences, you know, as I said, the different persuasions, I had taken my Shahada at um, uh, Masjid Malcolm Shabazz on 116th Street in Lenox. Mm. And, you know, we, you know, so I'd taken the Shahada in front of, you know, the, the, the required witnesses, I believe is five is, 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 is what it is. And I, you know, attended Juma prayer and I'm all excited, of course, you know, um, you know, and so, you know, I'm formally then. And I then the next Sunday, I tell brother, you know, uh, uh, I told brother Jason, and he said, "No, nah, brother, you went to the wrong place." Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And so that Sunday, right, the minister was speaking, and I remember I was at the masjid, and I asked him, "Well, when are we going to secure brother Farrakhan, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the imam there?" Mm -hmm. And I prayed to Allah that I don't forget what he told me was, "We don't care what this con." or that con does. Mm -hmm. Brother, Allah be my witness. I got the hell out of that place right away. Mm -hmm. And I went straight up to 125th Street and by Allah's grace and permission, you know, we never looked back. Excellent. What, why, did, why did you accept the teachings? Well, as a child, you know, growing up in New York uh, and particularly in Brooklyn, you know, brother, there was always something that I believed how we were treated differently as a people. You know, when I was seven, eight years old and everything, you know, seeing stuff on the news and not quite knowing, you know, what the difference was, why we as black people were treated differently. And throughout then my progression, you know, I was, my family was, you know, raised and they were, you know, devout Seventh-day Adventists. Yes, sir. And so, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I was raised in a Seventh-day Adventist church, but, a, but, you know, because we, you know, our parents weren't, weren't really big, you know, to force religion on us. But I would say, if anyone were to ask, and in truth, looking at it, that what was my religion and say before Islam, then I would really say that I, you know, uh, subscribe to the Seventh-day Adventist church. So, but it never gave me the answer as far as, as to why we were treated, you know, uh, differently, why we were such, you know, so disrespected and discriminated against, and I didn't know. Yes, sir. So when I was in high school, as I was mentioning, you know, reading the literature from the Ansaru Allah community, you know, it, it spoke a lot about, you know, that how it was in discrimination and, and the disparate treatment that we as black people were receiving. Mm. And of course, still searching. So I knew then that Islam is going to be, you know, the religion that I'm going to choose. Then having read, as I mentioned, uh, in the first year of college, freshman year, having read the autobiography of Malcolm X, then that's when I knew then the nation. And again, though, not knowing that there were different <laughs> persuasions, I yes, just went to the wrong place. But that's what it was, brother. And, 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 and as I tell people, too, it fit what I believed 
and it answered a lot of the questions that I had with respect to why it was, why we were treated so disrespectfully and why it was that, you know, and so disparately. Um, and of course, as I tell anybody, you know, and, and I'm just quite frank with it, I didn't view initially the, you know, the nation, you know, like from the religious standpoint, I, I realized it was religion, of course, but my thing was, okay, as we, uh, uh, on our lessons, who was the white man, you know, and, and, you know, and that just fits. I was like, okay, this is fine. This is what I love and I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> and then, you know, as the Honorable Minister Lawrence Farrakhan has brought us along, you know, and I'm, you know, and, and, and by Allah's grace and permission, how now it has just developed me into being more, you know, religiously aware. And I'm in no in no sense, brother. I, I you know, to the audience, to let them all know I'm, I'm really far, far, far from, you know, any, you know, uh, religious wise and being able to. I mean, it's my religion, but I'm so far, you know, um, like I can't quote scripture and all that stuff there. But the teachings are my life. You know, um, it's just a way of life for me, and I just thank Allah every day. Um, that I'm a Muslim follower of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and Master Farad Muhammad, of course. Praise be to Allah. Excellent. And thank you all for watching. Um, Orlando says, Welcome, Slime, Brother Athil. I mean, Welcome, Slime, Sister Bronda from Chicago says, My brother, Sister Anita from Baltimore says, One of my favorite brothers in my 32 years in the nation. He is a gift. Brother um, Athil, so I didn't know you, I didn't know anything about New York. How okay. did you end up being in DC and the dope buses, and how did that come about? Well, after I graduated college, uh, one of uh, my uh, frat brothers, are the assistant dean of our line, um, he was, when he, he, he graduated a year before I did, and he uh, uh, began his uh, graduate studies at Howard uh, mm -hmm. to be a, a clinical psychologist, and now he is, you know, the, the Dr. Derek Marichaud in, uh, in the D.C. area. And so... When I finished, I always thought, brother, that if I had gone back to New York, it would not have appeared to me to be any uh, uh, any progression, you know. So he said, "Well, brother, look, why don't you just come to D.C.? You know, we we uh, uh, you know get an apartment, roommates, and everything, and and there it was." Mm -hmm. And so when I uh, my grandparents sent me home to St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands for the summer. And when I came back stateside, you know, I went to D.C. And um, still, of course, now looking for the mosque in D.C. because, of course, I was in the mosque in New York, number seven. Mm -hmm. Didn't know, of course, where the mosque was in D.C. And so one day I was uh, uh, on Georgia Avenue, a couple of blocks down from where the tape connection was. And I, uh, and I ran into Brother Ernest. And he mm -hmm. told me that we were meeting at the time at the Howard Inn. And so that Sunday... Uh, I had gone to the Howard Inn and, you know, and from there, you know, we were, you know, just, you know, in, in the fruit of Islam. Okay. And um, of course, um, your dad was, um, uh, was traveling with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and, you know, he was in and out of the city. So I didn't really get to meet him at, as yet. In fact, the time uh, when I had uh, come to DC, Captain Harry uh, uh, Muhammad was our captain. And your dad was, I don't know if he was a lieutenant, but I know, of course, he was over the tape connection, naturally, it started that, and a few other uh, uh, businesses that he had uh, going. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I think your mom was pregnant with you. I think she was at that time. So, <laughs> or may not have been too long after, but um, that's how we found our way to D.C. and, and mosque number four. And um, at the time also, Brother Donald Muhammad was the secretary of our mosque. And then, you know, he was uh, relieved of that post at some point uh, uh, there after that. Brother Ernest then became the secretary and I um, uh, succeeded Brother Ernest as the secretary in our mosque uh, number four in the mid-Atlantic region. And that was all in uh, 1987 to 1988. Excellent. I never knew the brother Ernest was a uh, secretary. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, brother, we have a rich history, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, brother, I feel now on the Dope Buster famous video that's on YouTube. I see you moving out in Mayfair Mansions and, you know, yes. you're walking. Yes, sir. During all of this time with the police and the gangs and the drug lords and all of this kind of stuff, did you ever fear for your life? 
And if you did, how did you overcome it? Uh, yeah, I did. I'm, I'm, you know, brother, I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, sit here and tell people that I was, you know, uh, you know, unfearful. And, you know, I, I, I was, I, yeah, I was. <laughs> and the thing that I remembered was, it wasn't that, that, you know, it was that the night before, um, brother Leroy, we, we were down, this is when we were at the 1615 Kenilworth. Uh, uh, and that's what mass number four was. Mm-hmm. And we had a, there was a basement in that building. And uh, in the basement you had, we had, you know, bunk beds and everything where, you know, some brothers, you know, actually stayed there and lived there. Brother Troy, uh, Muhammad, uh, Brother Anthony, now the minister in Memphis. He, you know, uh, lived there for a while. Uh, Brother William Sevenex uh, was there and a few other brothers. But I remember that night, that Sunday, April 17, um, your dad had us, in the mosque and we had gone down to the basement and he was talking to us. And then all of a sudden, brother Leroy came out, you know, I don't know if your audience knows brother Leroy, but he's Mr. Mr. Martial arts. <laughs> and he said very, very clearly, he started, you know, you know, speaking very loudly and forthrightly, just telling the brothers, look, we getting ready to go into war and mm-hmm. anybody who does not, you know, want to, and, you know, just, you know, in fact, he just used some very, you know, um, choice language is what it amounts to. And mm-hmm. just let us know, look, you know, we may, there may be some casualties. These, you know, these the words that he used. And so, you know, I didn't really think much of it then, you know, because, you know, we're going there in ranks and everything. But the time that I really got, you know, nervous was, not when we were there that morning. In fact, uh, you know, I think Brother William Sevenex, you know, uh, he really faced more than than I was, you know, mm-hmm. facing at the time. In fact, um, as you may, some may recall the story, that's when the, uh, the the brother had brandished the shotgun, and then you know, Big Brother Ronald body slammed him the shotgun and Brother mm-hmm. William Sevenex, and so then we came on the scene, and it just so happened that um, Joe Johns. Uh, local uh, reporter from, I think it was WRC TV 4, just happened to be there, you know, and that's how everything really was captured on on camera. So what wound up happening was uh, police had come in force and we had at some point had gone into the command post. Well, at the time, uh, uh, we were all in ranks against the wall in one in the command post at Mayfair. Then the police had come and the police had blocked the door and they were also on the other wall. Mm. And so your dad was speaking, I don't know if it was the assistant chief of police or it may have been the chief of police. I'm not, it may have been a uh, chief Turner or, or his designee. He was not in the, 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 the room at the time. Now, brother Anthony, who we call now affectionately secret squirrel, he and I were in the middle of the brothers and the police. And so the police had their guns drawn. The brothers, we were on, you know, the brothers were on against the wall and me and Brother Anthony in the middle. Now, I don't know how Brother Anthony felt. But we started saying, La Akbar, and the chant started going up. The brothers started moving toward the police. The police weren't moving, and I'm in the middle. And I'm mm. saying, oh, you know. Mm, mm, <laughs> How I overcame the fear, I would just think that time and circumstance, because in truth, brother, you know, only a lot intervened, in my opinion, you know, uh, 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 with our affairs that day. And I guess the fear, it was that we just started chanting Allahu Akbar, and that spirit also came in me. But I'm being honest, if the police opened fire from my position, I mean, I'm, you know. <laughs> Because literally, I'm right in the middle. The brothers are, are, are moving and the police aren't moving. Mm-hmm. And I would have been, you know, I could have gotten blows. I'm, you know, who knows? I could have been shot and everything. And, and I'm not a martial artist and all of that stuff. But we just started, you know, the brothers just started law up and I joined in. And by Allah's grace and permission, they backed down. And I said, <laughs> thank Allah for that. Because again, I may not have been here, brother. And and perhaps, uh, you know, the story, you know, would have been told, well, Brother Athil, you know, he was um, one of us and lost his life. And, 
you know, and maybe then that uh, Allah would have, you know, greeted me. And as we say during the Janaza prayers of the believers, may Allah be pleased with him. And perhaps Allah may have been pleased with me uh, had that happened. But by his grace and permission, we, you know, we, we're still here. Yes, sir. Allah, Allah, Allah. Um, so Latrice D. Muhammad says, ASA, Brother Phil, what's up, fam? Brother well, thank you so much, my dude. Sister, Sister Bronda says, great history. We are blessed to have such an awesome, steadfast brother in our nation. Thank you, Athil, for your service. Thank you, uh, ma'am. My praise is due to Allah. Thank you. Uh, Sister Mimi says, thank you for sharing this history. Yes, sir. Brother Athil, so, so after the Dope Busters, what did you, where did your career take you? Like, how did, where did your path? Did you well, um, we still were in D.C. And um, there was some, you know, and I, I, I never tried to, you know, hide or skirt anything. We were having some concerns with the, um, with the laborers in the mosque, for lack of a better term. Mm. And so um, uh, uh, I was no longer the secretary, and your dad had me, you know, was gracious enough and asked me to assist him at the tape connection. Mm. And so, you know, we were, you know, fervently, you know, managing the tape connection there, and Sister Mary Alice and and uh, uh, Sister Danette would you know come by and all the students at Howard. Well, that was you know it was something that I felt you know that I was just pleased to do because you know your dad asked me to do it and you know at the time of course your father was then yes he was this, the the uh, regional uh, uh, captain Mid Atlantic regional captain at the time mm. and you know and and so there was still a little bit of friction and tension I guess between the laborers and the uh, and 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 the brothers for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I had, as I said, you know, was you know, with, you know, at the tape connection. And we I just didn't like in truth the way that the mosque officials were requesting some of the things from the tape connection. For instance, I was, you know, maybe it may not have been the best thing, but I was loyal to your dad. Mm, mm, mm. And there was a lot of friction there. And I remember that um, the uh, uh, secretary at the time uh, had wanted to, I guess, take all of the receipts or something like that from the take connection. I just refused to do it <laughs> because I didn't think it was right. Mm -hmm, you know, um, and, you know, and I was, you know, how we were taught, we here in Oban don't take on mixed instructions. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. My instruction was, directly from your father, you know, look, you answer to me. Now, granted, I mean, obviously, we know we answered to the Honorable Minister Louis <laughs> Farrakhan, but, you know, but the thing was that, look, you don't, you know, I didn't have that authority, and I'm just, you know, hearing old bang. And so there was a lot of tension there, so much so to the point that I wound up, and your dad said, okay, well, you know, do what they ask. And I then wound up, you know, just submitting and then eventually leaving the tape connection. Mm. So what happened was I remember Sister Beverly, I, you know, uh, uh, she's in Atlanta, Brother Timothy's wife, who was the first officer at the time. She would tell me, she said, Athil, don't, you know, uh, uh, fight it. Just, you know, submit to it because there's something going on. She believed this. I don't know if she had any direct evidence, but she believed that, that there was something going on. And she was saying, Allah is putting you through this because he's trying to reveal something. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, again, as I was saying, you know, I'm still not all that spiritual and religious. You know, I'm in the nation. This is my love, my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, you know, I'm thinking, okay, yes, ma'am. So I eventually do leave. Uh, but before then, I'm telling you, I was having some, you know, some little health concerns. I developed a knot on the, you know, a huge knot in the back of my head here. And I was all tension related. Mm -hmm. And eventually then I left. And as it turned out, there was something big that happened. And I remember then that it, it, when the minister had come to D.C., it was, oh, dear, he was at the... Um, Forget the hotel where it was. Uh, um, it was during the. Oh man, it was. It wasn't powered last forever because I was in the eight. I was eighty five. I I don't remember the name of the tour. It may have been. Politics without economics is symbol without substance. That may have been the lecture tour that the minister was on at the time. Mm -hmm. But my point is that 
there was something that had come afloat in the then secretary's department and some, you know, some improprieties were, were, were discovered. And I was remembering what Sister Beverly said that when that had come to pass, there was no way in the world that my name would have been associated with it directly or indirectly. And I believe then that that was what Allah was putting me through. And I, and I guess that that was trying to show me too how um, stubborn I am because, you know, a lot would probably have a trial, try to say, okay, look, fool, get out the way so that I can expose this. But my silly self is still there trying to say, oh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I guess I had to be whipped out of the position, if you will, yes, sir. Yes, sir. for all of that to be exposed. And indeed it was. And, you know, by, you know, his permission that no one could even, you know, remotely, as I said, directly, indirectly, mention my name. And mm. so... A year or so had passed. I had um, was uh, I had taken up and managed the store, this linens and things store out in Rockville, Maryland. Um, mm. And your dad was saying to me, "Athel, you know, come on back, brother." And and I wasn't, I wasn't gone, you know, but he was saying, "Okay, come on." Then we um, he had asked me to assist with, you know, uh, he you know started tape connection at the command post, and he would asked me to come and assist with that. And then, of course, we, you know, started at NOI Security, and uh, he had asked if I could assist with Brother Troy and Brother Dean at the time, now Brother Al Najim, and um, we were working then in the administration, if you will, of uh, NOI Security, and that's where, you know, that's how that story went, and um, I dealt with, uh, you know, the payroll, I was writing, you know, the number, the all of the contracts that we had, not only in DC, well, eventually I did. I'm not going to say that I, you know, did, you know, it was an eventual thing. I started writing them and then we started getting contracts in New York and Los Angeles. You know, I was, you know, you know, assisting on the drafting of those contracts and negotiating them and, and um, still handling the payroll issues and certain of other administrative things that we had, you know, for, you know, NOI security. Excellent. And thank you, Brother Phil, for those great details. Sister, I mean, Brother Eric from uh, D.C. says, greetings, my brother. That's right, number four. Sister Brenda says, gotta love Brother Phil and his reflection of details. <laughs> you do too, <laughs> D. Muhammad says, I remember that. Excellent. Yes, yes sir. Then, Brother Phil, how did you end up in Houston? Okay. Now, going back now to when I was uh, six and eight years old living in New York and, and Brooklyn, and knowing and believing, you know, what the, you know, the problems of our people, I'd always wanted to be an attorney. And, um, you know, having, you know, I didn't go to law school until 1996. Mm. So what happened was, you know, as I said, I had always wanted to, you know, be an attorney. And eventually, you know, I did take the LSAT back in 19, when I was in my senior year in college, mm -hmm. I don't even remember how well I did. I, I took the LSAT, I don't, you know, who knows. And so I wasn't really prepared for it, you know. Um, but then I, you know, got really, really serious again. In fact, what I had done was when I was in DC, I um, was, I had gone to the University of the District of Columbia and uh, studied for a year in, in the graduate program of urban studies, urban policy, I, be, I beg your pardon. Mm. And I wasn't really serious with it. I was a secretary at the time. And, and I remembered uh, a professor of mine, Dr. Haley, he told me, he said, Phil, you know, you've got to make a decision. You know, are you going to, you know, dedicate yourself to these graduate studies or are you going to dedicate yourself to the nation? And he wasn't trying to, you know, make it seem that, make it seem that the nation was something wrong. But he was saying that my attention was torn. Mm -hmm. And what he said was, and I pray to Allah, I don't forget this, that you can do more for the nation with the degree mm -hmm. than without it. Mm -hmm. yes, now, sir. Granted, still, I'm not still, you know, uh, um, you know, fully concentrating on my graduate studies, because again, my thought is, you know, I want to go to law school. Yes, sir. And so I was just, I guess, biding time, uh, for lack of a better term. So, uh, as we're in, you know, now uh, uh, at the uh, NOI security, we were at 1444 I Street, and then we moved to, oh dear, um, 
it was 17th Street or Connecticut Avenue. I, I, it, it'll come to me. My memories, you know, that that part left me a little bit, but it'll come back to me. Yes, so I finally, when we were at the new office building or the different, when we moved the office, um, I then took the LSAT again. And again, I didn't do all that well, but I did well enough is what it amounted to. So much so that uh, when I applied to law school, I applied to the University of Baltimore. And this again was in 1996. Uh, mm. I applied also to Texas Southern University here in Houston. Um, Brother Arif, Brother Abdullah Arif Muhammad, our general counsel, Sister Ruth Muhammad, the photographer of um, you know the Dope Busters photographer. Yes, sir. She was gracious enough to write a letter of uh, recommendation as well as Brother Arif. And I was accepted into the summer program, what they call down here, the LEAP program. And that was an acronym. I don't remember what the acronym stands for, but it was a summer program to see how, you know, if you can qualify yourself for law school. We, so we left DC, we flew down here uh, in May of, uh, uh, May of 1996. And uh, the program lasted six weeks. I was successful in it and then was granted full-time admission to law school. So we mm. began law school uh, here in Houston in, said in the fall of 1996. Unbeknownst to me, what happened was Texas Southern has what they call a first year curve, meaning then that the, uh, of all the first year students, we may have had a class of about, it may have been, let's say about 300 students. Well, the students who, are the bottom of that one third get curved out because they didn't meet the grade, if you will. And mm. you are, uh, are compared to, it's grade point average compared to everybody else. Mm. Well, brother, unfortunately, I was one of those who was curved out. Mm. Mm. So I sat out and when you're curved out, what happens is you actually have to sit out two years of law school and then reapply. And for the most part, the reapplication process would be all right. But what happened was, again, by law's grace and permission, um, we finally discovered and took advantage of what's the, what, in the, what the uh, federal uh, uh, law of is the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. And for anybody who knows me, you know, believers know, and my friends, everybody who knows me knows that I, you know, cannot see out of my right eye. Mm. And so I believed that that may have been one of the reasons why my grades were, you know, uh, uh, you know, below par, because as in anything, when you, you know, my vision was, you know, I couldn't see out of my right eye and still can, I'll never be able to. And my vision, my left eye was at best 50, uh, 20. Uh, mm. And so I didn't know anything about, you know, the Americans with Disabilities Act. And the, the thing that happens with it is that, you know, if you have a sort of disability, then you are given testing accommodations. Mm. And the testing accommodations that I then eventually was given was, let's say, additional time to take an exam because I couldn't, you know, really see. I'm competing with people, let's say, who have 20-20 vision and those sort of things. And I'm, you know, taking these law school exams, not being able to see properly as well as everybody else. Yes, sir. So we were able then on that to, we just, we still sat out the year or a year rather, but we were able to come back a year earlier. So now I have something to prove. I'm given these testing accommodations and by Allah's grace and permission, you know, that we actually, you know, graduated with honors. Praise be to God. And, yes, and you know, I'm very, you know, and, and I was saying that because, you know, that's one of the things that really gets me that, you know, that if I was put then finally on the even playing field with everybody else, well, now I have to make something of this. So, you know, we found we, we graduated with three point, oh dear, I think I had a 3.1 grade point average that, you know, qualified me, you know, for, uh, 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 I graduated cum laude. Yes, and so and my, my name was, I was so proud of that. Brother. My name was in two parts of the, of the graduating um, uh, uh, program, yes, sir. you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I was also named in 2001, uh, who's who amongst American law students. 
And I have that plaque today and you know, very, very proud of that because again, you know, it, it just showed me that what I can do if the playing field is even for me, but yes, uh, make no mistake about it, brother. It's only because of, you know, mass, you know, my, my, uh, my, uh, the, the guidance and the grace of Master Fraud Muhammad and me focusing on, you know, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Excellent. And thank you, brother. I didn't know any of that. <laughs> I'm very inspired. I yes, don't, uh, I don't feel so bad for my uh, grade point average uh, struggles sometimes as well. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> persistence. Uh, Sister Brian just said you were persistent and overcame a lot. Walk by Mimi says all praises to Allah. Sister yes. Brian said I'm glad you're telling your story. Brother Phil. Yes. Yes, sir. Have you ever worked with the most honorable missile as far as have I ever worked with him? Yes, sir. As far as, as far as meeting him or doing anything with law. Oh well, yeah. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you know, um, when we were in, you know, D.C., I remember uh, I, I, I stood a couple of posts with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, yes, and um, one was when he was at uh, when he had come to Mayfair uh, Mansions, where you know, with Dope Busters began, and um, I stood front rostrum, you know for him or with him, I guess. Yes, um, of course, I met him on a number of occasions, spoke with him on a number of occasions yeah. uh, when I was the, um, the Mid-Atlantic Regional Secretary. But the very first time, brother, and I was talking to a dear, dear sister last night about this, the very first time that I met him was in, was February 14. Happy birthday to somebody who's also celebrates a birthday on February 14. Yeah. She knows who she is. Okay. Uh, but this was February 14, <laughs> 1985. We brought the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to Lincoln University. Mm. And um, it was in the height of, you know, uh, uh, when Reverend Jackson had, uh, well, in 84, of course, he had uh, run for president. But of course, this was still in the height of, you know, the minister and him being, you know, dragged through the press and, and the media and all of that stuff. Yes, sir. So we brought him to Lincoln and, um, and I introduced him mm. and as the, I wasn't the student body president, but I was the chairman of the lectures and recitals committee. And, you know, so we brought him there because now, now understand that I was already in the mosque in, 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 in New York yes, sir. under uh, Minister Kareem. Mm, mm. And so you know, I you know I knew the brothers and everything, and of course, you know I'm soldiering. Well, we bring the minister in 1985. He speaks, and I remember then we were down in the uh, in the lunch or the cafeteria of the student union building having lunch, mm -hmm. and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. We were at a table seated with four of us. The honorable minister Louis Farrakhan was seated in front of me. To my left was Dr. Abdul Ali Muhammad, and to my right was Minister Abdul Karim Muhammad. Mm. And, you know, we had a, a, a lengthy conversation and I remembered this, that I asked the minister if he wanted anything and Minister Karim said, well, Brother Theo, just go bring the minister a banana. <laughs> I <remember laughs> bring the minister a banana to then. And, you know, and, and I didn't know, of course, at the time, you know, that I would be, um, you know, one of the attorneys you know, on the staff of uh, the general counsel, Brother Abdul Arif Muhammad, and working closely with him, mm. uh, Brother Arif, and then in, in turn, you know, assisting with some of the legal concerns that we have in our nation. Yes, sir. So there have been other, you know, times, of course, that I um, uh, 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 was with, you know, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and every time, Brother, you know, uh, uh, has really, really been something. I was fortunate enough and blessed to be at the palace on a, on, on a couple of occasions and, and, and meetings with him and the other attorneys in the nation. And, um, you know, and just being, you know, when I think back to when I was six and eight years old in Brooklyn, New York, watching Like It Is by uh, now, you know, who's passed on, Gil Noble, you know, thinking about then and now to where I am today, that after all of these years that, you know, we're an attorney, we reached that goal, uh, reached the goal of, you know, being, you know, in our nation. And as I tell people, and some of us know that, you know, being uh, a member of Omega Psi Phi and being uh, a member of the Fruit of Islam, nothing could have been a prouder moment for me than when our fraternity 
uh, uh, recognized and gave the minister yes, a lifetime yes. achievement award. And then when the minister graciously accepted uh, 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 the uh, lifetime membership in the fraternity, it was as, as I was saying, it was my two worlds coming together and nothing, I don't think anything could be uh, better than that in my life. I, I, I can't imagine at my age that anything can top that. And I would doubt it seriously, but we're just thankful to allow that and be able to do that and, and be able to see that and reach our goals. Praise be to God. Thank you all for watching. Since Teresa says, what field of law does the brother practice? What field of law do you practice? Well, primarily uh, I handle, you know, what I, you know, what, what, what the, I guess the media and people call civil rights, but as our late brother, um, uh, Lou Meyer, Attorney Lou Myers said that it is really human rights. Um, so in that regard, you know, we, we, that was what we handled. We handled discrimination cases and I represent people accused of crimes. Now, when I say that, you know, the last part, people accused of crimes, a lot of people, you know, they chuckle at that. But, you know, because a lot of people will say that, you know, they're criminal lawyers or criminal defense lawyers. Well, you know, I, I, I believe that the proper way for me to say it is I represent people accused of crimes because you're accused of a crime. You know, you haven't done it. And so for me to say then that I'm a criminal lawyer or criminal defense lawyer, well, I, I, I just don't think that that does proper do for those persons who are accused. So that's why I say, you know, I represent people accused of crimes and, and in truth, you know, when I was in high school and in and, 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 and college and even in law school, when friends of mine, you know, look and they know what type, what areas that I am in, no one is surprised that that is that those are the uh, the disciplines, if you will, that I uh, that I practice in or the practice areas that I delve into. Excellent. And thank you, Brother Phil. And thank you all for watching. Thank you, Sister Tracy. Thank everyone for watching. But I, but I feel what do you want your legacy to be? Boy, I've never really, you know, well, in truth, brother, I, you know, I would probably say, I like to think that I'm a bit misunderstood. And, and my, 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 and, and, and my point of that is that people, I, I think have a, you know, they, they, they may not know me a little bit. I'm very, I'm, I'm introverted, extremely, extremely shy. And, and, you know, and I guess you know it's a number of reasons and everything. As we look back and when we talk about the the uh, 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 Scientology and, and and being audited, you know, and and I've not been audited. I'm not going to say you know, sit here I have, but but thinking that as we understand through the auditing process that people have engrams, and I guess that's that has fostered and you know my introversion and my my shyness, and so there's something there that I I, I know what it is. I believe I know what it. Is. Yes, sir. But but that being said, I think people probably really don't know me because I don't let people really know me. But I, I, I would say that, you know, on my tombstone, if I'm lucky enough to have one, or yes, fortunate sir. enough to have one, or, you know, somebody may say something kind that he's a person who really tried, tried to bring certain factions together, try to, um, um, you know, do, I'm not even going to say keep my, because I, I, you know, I'm not one of those who I wish I was keeping my word and everything, but sometimes I, I, I just unfortunately don't, but I try, I try to do the best. And, and in truth, brother, there is nothing more that gives me any more pleasure than being in the nation of Islam as one of the uh, uh, staff attorneys, for lack of a better term. And so, again, to somebody who really tried and was hoping, really in truth, to be accepted. Mm. Because I guess ultimately that might be one of my other hangups too, that, you know, the, the you know, rejection. And I know the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught on this, uh, uh, you know, various times, um, but because still I have that impediment or that engram, you know, just still trying to overcome that. And so just trying to be accepted and to bring, you know, uh, things together 
and uh, um, that here's a brother who really, really tried. He wasn't perfect. You know, a, a, a friend of mine who is, um, and, 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 and Princess Giggles, your sister will appreciate this. She's an AKA, yes, a friend of mine who uh, uh, was at Lincoln. She had this philosophy that uh, she said, I may not be perfectly wise, perfectly witty, or she, you know, was a female, of course, so she would say perfectly pretty, but I would say, you know, uh, I would use the phrase and handsome, but I'm perfect being me. And, and, and I think, you know, that all in all, you know, I try the best that I can, you know, whether it's representing persons who, uh, who ask me to represent them in any, you know, endeavor, and also, you know, even trying to be an acceptable Muslim, you know, in my prayers, which aren't many sometimes, you know, again, I, I fall so so far short, brother, yes, and sisters who are listening. And, but, you know, I, I remember Muhammad Ali said this one thing. He, you know, in one interview that I heard him, he said, you know, when you say your prayers at night, or he said this, I guess he said when he says his prayers at night, you know, that says, you know, he asks Allah, have I done something that you would be pleased with? And I think this past Ramadan, you know, um, I started incorporating that into my prayers and really asking also that Allah, can you, you know, have me, you know, worthy to wear the name Muhammad, you know, because as the saying is to whom much is given, much is required. Yes. And so, you know, as my prayers, you know, as I've incorporated, as I said, you know, toward the end, you know, a lot, you know, can you, you know, can I, you know, at least be worthy to, to wear the name Muhammad? And that to me is, 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 is quite a, quite an awesome task. And because I remember the minister was saying this one time that, you know, that sometimes the things that some of our brothers and sisters may be doing are younger brothers and sisters, particularly on uh, these social medias, YouTube and, you know, my face and all of whatever, you know, all that stuff, my space, face, Facebook, and, you know, that sometimes we, you know, we, we might do things and post things that are inappropriate. And I think, I, 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 I believe he may have mentioned this, that, you know, that he was going to, you know, take our names away. Now, granted, I don't do those things, but that's not to say that I don't, you know, there's some things that I just won't post them, you know, is what they're about to do. But, you know, but there are some things, of course, that I would just say, you know, a lot, am I worthy to wear the name Muhammad? And again, that again is striving for, you know, being accepted is what it amounts to. And so I know it's a long answer, but the thing would be, my legacy would be that I would hope would be, here's a brother who really tried, who was sort of misunderstood, but really wanted to be accepted. Excellent. That's a powerful answer. Brother and Brother Atil, thank you so much for being transparent. I've learned so much. Um, Brother Ernest uh, from D.C., of course, says, this is my brother for life. Asked him about our beautiful basketball match. Just to Brenda said, no, 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 no. Well, I'll tell the story. Uh, may I? Because, yes, uh, I mean, you know, everybody knows I'm a huge, as far as basketball is concerned, a huge Los Angeles Laker fan. Okay. And I have this, I still have it to this day, this Los Angeles Laker warm-up. And Brother Ernest and I played a game of one-on-one -on -one basketball in D.C. Mm. He was wearing shoes and, you know, uh, uh, you know dress shoes. Mm. And I was in my Laker warm-up <laughs> with sneakers on. And I think Brother Ernest may have had a cute few more baskets than I did. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the basketball story that he might be referring to. But again, I I talked the game better than I could play the game. And everybody <laughs> knows that, you know? <laughs> since, since Miranda said, we really are blessed for those of us that know you, one of the nation's Jews. You said it right there. You are always perfect being with you. That's why we love you, brother. My sister, Naima. As you said, Princess Naima says, um, we love you, Brother Athil. Uh, Princess Giggles, you, he says, we love you. And thank you all for watching. This is a great interview. I can't wait to put it up on uh, YouTube. Sister Michelle Muhammad from Chicago says, so humble. Had, um, have had this wonderful spirit since I met you moons ago. Praise thank be to you. Allah. Uh, Brother Athil, I just yeah. thank you for um, taking time out of your busy schedule. Now that me welcome. and you have 
uh, mutual something to agree on because I'm a LeBron fan. You're a Lakers fan. Hopefully, we can work this thing out for these next three years. And um, I just look forward to um, working with you in the future. If I ever get in trouble with that, I'm going to call you. I'm telling you right now, I'm calling you. Well, brother, uh, you know, we, we, we in truth have, if, if I may, so, so many, you know, qualified lawyers, you know, in the nation mm-hmm. that which, you know, and, and we're working on some things through, you know, the Ministry of Justice and everything. And, um, you know, I, and I remember, you know, it's one beautiful thing, brother, that, you know, uh, that I would look at with being in, in, you know, going to law school, you know, when I was already, you know, in the nation, registered, that I guess, you know, growing up, you know, in the nation and then going to law school while I was in the nation, really, you know, it's, it's, it's different, I guess, a lawyer or somebody, or even professional for that matter, who is already in his or her own profession and then comes to the nation. It's a whole other thing when somebody, you know, is in the nation and then goes on to school. And I remember I was mentioning this to your mother at one point. I, when I was in law school, you know, um, it was, you know, I was already, you know, in the you know, nation for years and, you know, working with, you know, NOI security, I was sort of sheltered. And I remembered I was asking your mother um, when I was in my first year of law school, here now I'm, you know, thrown back to the wolves, so to say, not, you know, figuratively, of course. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And then it hit me, I was thinking, well, all of the stuff that's going on, you know, the way that our, you know, our sisters and brothers, the way we're talking to one another and everything, I asked, I said, well, how is it that our youngsters, our young children at MUI, you know, because we're sheltered when we're at MUI and any of our Muslim affiliated schools. And then when we go on to college, you know, how is it then, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be thrown into a den, if you will, and, you know, and we're not going to have that protection. And she told me, she said, well, that's why the children and our students at MUI have to really have such a strong, strong hold, you know, uh, in, in, in the family and also be balanced so that when we go on to school, you know, uh, uh, to the colleges and universities, that we don't become ill affected by, you know, the things that go on. And so I'm saying all of that. I looked at Princess uh, uh, Giggles. And again, that's Mimi, everybody. That's my little <laughs> Mimi. I look at Princess Mariam. Brother Al Najim and, and, and Sister Najim is uh, a, a, a princess. I look at yourself. I look at Sabir and 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 Samad, uh, uh, and Najim. There, look. I look at Brother Troy's children. I look at Brother Ernest's children, yeah. and all of our children, and how we have you know come through MUI for some of us who had gone there for a short time or for a long time and had gone on to college and are still in the nation and have not allowed you know, the, the things on college campuses and the university campuses to ill affect us or to take us away from our Islam. And, you know, and, and I thank Allah for that, but I don't know, brother, how we were able to do it. I guess, well, I guess I do know. It's just with the faith that we have in Allah uh, and, 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 and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, yes, you know, and I'm just so, so proud you know, of, of, of all of our children, the ones who I saw, you know, growing up that now, you know, that graduated college, parents and everything, y'all are getting old, as I told you. <laughs> you know, I said, soon y'all going to be older than us. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But all praises are due to our love. Thank you, Brother Phil, and I love You're you, Brother Phil. And love, love you too, sir. Thank you so very much, family. Thank you all for watching. Be safe and well. Yes. Awesome.